Now I'd like to introduce Peter Goodhand, Executive Director of the Global Alliance for Geno Genomics and Health, a member of the Global Genes Medical and Science Advisory Board and the 2014 Champion of Hope in Collaborations in Science. Therefore, it's only appropriate that Peter will present this award of collaboration in science. Please join me in welcoming Peter to the stage. Thank you. Um, I thought when Nicole invited me to present this award, it was because I was one of the two winners last year. I realized it's so she could keep up the ratio of people with accents from across the ocean <laughs> presenting awards. Um, I would also like to say that, I mean, we, we get the chance of being the last of the, uh, the awards, uh, and I would just like to congratulate all the other awards, and a special call out, if you'll forgive the fact I live in Canada, to Maddie, because from my office I see Queen's Park, and I've spent many, many days in there trying to change the mind of the Minister of Health, so you have my special respect. Uh, as we've already said, the Global Alliance was recognized last year in this particular award for collaboration in science. And it was very much at a personal level. That was my response for the last 20 odd years of dealing with a rare disease that impacted my family was the one thing I could do was drive collaborations in science. I'm not a scientist, but I could link research, I could link business, I could link to uh, clinical care. So I think this, I'm particularly honored to be able to present this award uh, I've read about the pioneering work and I've, I've had the opportunity to talk to our two awardees and they they've made amazing progress in just a couple of years and it's been pioneering work and it's been driven by partnership and, and I, pa their passion, their commitment to make a real difference in the life of families living with their disease and that's the ALD community and in just two years they formed a network, a collaboration, ALD Connect that has a clinical trials network, a patient network, and they've laid the foundation for collecting sequence data and put that in another collaboration with an even larger initiative that can start to look at big data. They're led collectively, collaboratively, by researchers, clinicians from six different institutions, by patient advocates, and, by, and they have alongside them industry partners making their critical contribution. Collectively, they define collaboration. Dr. Florian Eichler cannot be here this evening, but it is my honor to invite Ben Lanai and Karen O'Sullivan Forton to the stage as this year's Champion of Hope Collaboration in Science. Thank you so much uh, to Global Genes. So uh, we're here to accept uh, this award, this wonderful award on behalf of the organization. Um, ALD, X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, is a rare metabolic disease. Uh, it is a, a single gene mutation, an inability that causes an inability to metabolize a key element and uh, this element accumulates in the body and causes neurological damage. Um, based on the age of onset, the progression can be very fast and very grim, or can be uh, milder, uh, as is typical in, um, as the uh, age of onset is uh, later in life. So ALD Connect is a, uh, a patient-powered research network uh, Kathleen and I are on the board of directors. Uh, we have nine neurologists and four patients or patient uh, representatives on the board. Um, I'd like to acknowledge some key people who got us here on this stage. Uh, first, my cousin Wendy White, uh, who is very well known in the rare disease community as a, as a wonderful uh, connector and enabler. Uh, About two years ago, Wendy said, you have to meet Nicole Boyce, who is a force of nature. And so Nicole uh, came to Palo Alto, my hometown, 
and we, uh, I thought of a place to take her for a power breakfast, and I chose uh, Il Fornaio, which if you know Palo Alto, Il Fornaio is the place for the power breakfast. <laughs> and so uh, we were uh, at breakfast, there was uh, Bill Gates in the room, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, Marissa Meyer, CEO of Yahoo, um, Meg Whitman, CEO of HP, but Nicole was the real star. She was the really important person. And then, of course, we got nominated uh, today by our uh, wonderful industry partner, uh, biotech company out of Boston, Cambridge, Mass, uh, Bluebird Bio, which is working on the greatest hope uh, for the pediatric phenotype of the disease a very uh, innovative gene therapy that potentially could cure uh, our, our boys who are affected by this disease. So what ALD Connect is about is really to um, plug uh, three key gaps, and, and arguably a, a fourth gap, but it's to plug a, uh, to compensate a deficit of, of knowledge among patients, of collaboration among physicians, and of uh, a deficit of patient input uh, to uh, physicians. And so we, over the last two years, have created, a, a, we've, we've kind of uh, accumulated a lot of knowledge and we've published a lot of information to patients uh, because I, I can tell you, I for myself was diagnosed five years ago, uh, read the Wikipedia entry on this disease, was absolutely devastated and didn't know where to turn. So we're trying to, uh, to remedy that, uh, that critical gap. Um, we're also uh, fostering collaboration among physicians. Uh, these are eminent researchers, but they work within the, uh, they've worked in the past in the, the silos, in the confines of their organizations. And we're uh, creating a platform for collaboration, including some key infrastructure like a patient registry, uh, natural history study, a biomarker database, and so on. And then finally, a way to uh, have patients uh, give advice to physicians. And in a relationship uh, of equals, a relationship of mutual trust and respect, uh, too often in the rare disease community, uh, I think you, you see both uh, extremes. You have people who are very deferential to physicians uh, and, and a little bit of a paternalistic uh, relationship, or people who are very you know, very impatient and, and very, um, very antagonistic. And uh, the idea here is to really craft a, a relationship of equals and um, have physicians and researchers take guidance uh, from patients around uh, priorities, uh, clinical trials, and, and where the funding should be spent. And the final point is uh, we have not had a, a leading role, but we've had a supportive role in advocating a, a key public policy measure, uh, which is um, a newborn screening for this disease. Uh, and it actually comes very often uh, twinned with uh, CRABE. Um, and newborn screening for this disease is not only the uh, morally the right thing to do, but also I, we think it's gonna be of tremendous clinical benefit uh, for patients and, and for a deeper knowledge about the disease. So to conclude, I, I will tell you, uh, I think we're here on this stage because as patients, um, the, the, most, uh, the most relevant way to help yourself is by uh, contributing what you know and helping others. So I, instead of feeling helpless, uh, despondent, uh, I feel like I'm making a difference uh, for this disease. And I will tell you just one quick anecdote in closing. I finally got around to watching the uh, Ken Burns documentary on the Roosevelt's, and I did not realize how sick uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our uh, great president, had been. It was long believed that he was struck with polio. It actually uh, probably was Guillain-Barré syndrome, but he caught it when he was 41. Um, he was near death for about nine months. He became blind, uh, he um, was extremely ill, and he was in a funk uh, for years. I didn't realize how long, 
I mean, he obviously was fighting clinical depression. He never uh, had the use of his legs again. He felt his political career was over. And um, he, one day, was traveling through Georgia and found that legendary place, Warm Springs, which is a, a, a thermal, uh, a place with thermal springs. And he bought it, he purchased the place, and he uh, fixed it up, he refurbished it, he, he made it into a uh, therapeutic center uh, for kids and adults afflicted with neurodegenerative diseases. And that gave him back his uh, legendary lust for life. He was alive again, he was kind of the benevolent godfather of the facility, he would talk to people, he would swim with people, he would uh, mentor and encourage people, and by being helpful to others, uh, he, um, he brought himself uh, back to life, and uh, we know what the rest of the story is. So again, thank you so very much. Just organized my little papers here. Um, I'm Kathleen O'Sullivan Fortin, and I just, on behalf of the entire board of ALD Connect, I would just like to thank you all um, for even putting us on the list among these amazing nominees and awardees tonight. Um, I'm truly honored. Um, my entree into the ALD world um, came a few years ago, about five years ago. Um, this may be sharing a little about my personality, but. Um, and you'll note I'm a tremendous oversharer, so I apologize in person. Uh, that my, it was New Year's Eve, uh, 2010, 2010, and um, my son, we were having a family dance party. My son had taken off his shirt, was swinging it over his head, and uh, really whooping it up. And I glanced at him and thought, God, he's really tan. And we live in Boston, and... <laughs> We haven't vacationed very frequently, and um, I probably don't tan very well. So I thought, gosh, that's odd. Um, and that was kind of, for us, that was the beginning of the odyssey, because ALD, adrenal leukodystrophy, the first part is, it, is adrenal. And uh, for us, that was our first indication that he had some sort of adrenal dysfunction. I will say that's not normally a catch. Probably a lot of people are in a position to make. Um, I am lucky enough to have, uh, my father is a retired neurologist, and my sister has adrenal dysfunction, which at the time we thought nothing of, and we thought, I said, you know, I Googled it, I looked it up, I said, gosh, you know, maybe this means he's got adrenal dysfunction too, does he have Addison's, should we talk about this? And my dad said, oh, good catch, yeah, call your pediatrician. And so, you know, we did the, the requisite tests, and they said, Oh, yeah, again, great, great catch, Mom. Um, adrenal dysfunction, and they gave him quick and easy cortisone replacement, and it was like a switch went on. Um, I often uh, used to describe my son as an Eeyore. Um, he was kind of a, a lap boy. He, you know, other fr my friend's boys would be climbing and jumping, and I'd think, they're terrible parents. Um, <laughs> you know, look at my son. He's right here. He's, he's so quiet. He's so, you know, he wouldn't jump or climb or do anything. He was just very subdued, mellow dude. Um, and then once he got a whiff of cortisone, I learned it was not my parenting. Uh, it was adrenal insufficiency. And so, and, you know, we learned about adrenal insufficiency. And so several weeks later, uh, in February, when I received a call from the chief of pediatric endocrinology at Mass General, I thought, what service? She asked, how is John? I said, he is fabulous, well done. You know, we th he, was having, he was struggling in school, now he's smart. You know, he has energy, he eats more. You know, all these things that they had said may be related. And she said, that's so great. Can you come in this afternoon with your husband, not your kids, and clear your morning tomorrow for neurology? And I thought, oh, that's great. Um, so she, and I got the, I, probably many people in this room have received uh, the following four words, don't look it up. And I said, so bad that I can't look it up? What is it? And she said, well, you know, um, it's, you know, he's got an, some elevated levels that are very distressing and we'd like to talk about it in person. And so um, 
I immediately called my pocket consult, my father, and I said, you know, this is what we just got this call, and, they, and he said, reject it, force a, a retest, that's a death sentence. We'll talk about his bedside manner later. Um, I said, thanks for your candor, Dad. Um, wow, okay. Um, so, you know, we tried to remain calm, and we met with the doctor, and she was very kind. Um, you know, I was struck last night watching the film. Uh, I did not receive an envelope. I, got, I was greeted instead with kind of the, the alternate flip, which was a hu immediate hug from someone that had never hugged me previously, who said, I'm so sorry to tell you this, you're such nice people. Um, and then we knew it was probably not great. Um, so we were, you know, but I do consider that to be a kind of a lucky turn of events because um, we learned about ALD the very next day. Uh, she had already scheduled an appointment with Florian Eichler, uh, who, if anyone is familiar, um, you know, we would have been struggling to get into his clinic um, but we just kind of fell into it. And so by the next morning, um, and I mentioned this, uh, we had already uh, created a PowerPoint of our questions because we'd read a bunch of articles overnight. And um, we came in ready to go. And he said, you know, I said, oh, I read about the, the study in France, footnote five states two boys. Do you know the outcomes? And he's like, pump your brakes. Um, he, he said, you know, we're going to have to, you know, first thing first, let's get him tested. Let's figure out what we're doing. Don't fuel the jet for Paris yet. Um, and let's just figure out what's going on. So we were lucky enough, you know, then to realize that after they did extensive testing that um, there's no wood to knock on, um, but that he had not yet converted to cerebral disease and that this was just kind of a really early and exciting and, and serendipitous chance to catch it early and um, watch his disease and watch for disease progression. And so, um, you know, I think Dr. Eichler knew from the start that I was not going to be an easy sideline parent. I was not going to be someone who would just sit back. And, um, you know, he came to me in 2012, over the years, he said, There's, oh, I think we're going to start a group. I said, that's great, whatever you need. Um, and, he, and he said, you know, I have this idea of this organization that's going to be clinicians and researchers and biotech and patients all sitting at the same table in a, you know, a pre-competitive space, leave, leave your ego at the door, uh, education be damned, we're going to sit in a circle, we're going to figure out, we're going to advance the ball and we're going to advance the cure for this disease because um, the boys who are diagnosed with ALD do not have time. Time is, is not on our side, if you, and certainly if you have cerebral disease, um, it, it, is, it is not in their favor. So, you know, I don't want to be cliched, but ALD Connect is really built on the premise of not only respect for, for the patient and for the doctor and for all stakeholders, but that we can catch more fish with a net than we can with one hook. And as patient, rare disease patients, we cannot we cannot wait for one doctor, um, unless it's Dr. Escalar, um, <laughs> or one researcher or one biotech company um, to come and save us and save our children and, and fix us. Um, and for us, collaboration is key. And so, you know, for my family, I was blessed to be in a position where if I'm, you know, I'm going to put our, we're going to put our effort into this and advocate on behalf of all the ALD boys because. I'm, I'm lucky. I have a son with ALD who is, not, who is not cerebrally involved as of yet, and, you know, it's my job to fight until I have to pass the baton or I don't have the energy to do it anymore. Um, so, you know, yes, we've mentioned our patient portal um, that launched a few months ago. Uh, we already have 200 affected individuals um, in a, matter, a short matter of months that have logged on and are tracking their neurological function and doctors are, and are, um, they can also do clinic side um, data entry. We had a biomarker summit where incidentally, we were sitting around and we were Skyping in with some participants from Europe and someone said, look, I'm interested in doing this study. Um, if you have any patients with the following criteria, I, I would love to get a, 
you know, a robust sample size, I'm assuming it will take me several years to compile this data. And someone raised their hand and said, oh, I have probably 100 or so patients. My assistant can put that data on a disk. Can I send it to you? And we all looked around and said, that's the magic sauce. Like, that's what can happen when everybody's, you know, primary focus is curing the disease. Um, and I would be remiss without mentioning that, you know, we have formed several work groups that are patient-led, um, dealing with everything from evaluating potential therapies and off-label treatments to physician outreach, patient outreach, um, our website, a series of educational webinars directly responsive to people who tell us, this is what I need to know. Um, also, as Ben uh, mentioned, you know, not only are we collaborating among physicians and researchers, um, we are bringing together the various ALD um, advocacy um, superheroes. And today, you know, Janice Sherwood and Elisa Seeger are here, and they are, they have my utmost respect and admiration. They are, they are the reason why millions of boys are gonna be saved because of newborn screening. And it's so important that Aiden and Sawyer and Evan and PJ and countless um, boys uh, did not pass in vain. So, um, you know, in closing, I'm, I'm so grateful for this honor. I hope that, you know, if you're in an organization um, that does not have a robust kind of collaborative partnership that you would consider adding it um, or enhancing the magic that you're already working with, uh, because, um, you know, today I was in a, I was in a um, track four, and this fabulous speaker said, you know, one plus one equals three, and that's what we've found, that uh, the sum is greater than our parts, so thank you.